It's another WKYT first alert severe weather day as we track additional rounds of heavy rains just ahead. A crash involving an officer transporting a prisoner leaves two people injured. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon to you. We are tracking heavy rain and storms moving across the area once again this afternoon. This round of weather is causing some flooding concerns. Let's go right to Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey on this WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. Chris? Yeah, flash flood watch continues for the entire region, guys. We've been setting this up for the past several days that we were going into a pattern that was likely unleash some torrential rains across the region. Somerset, boy, you got hit hard last night. We're watching some storms to your west. Lexington uh, being hard hit right now. And we've had better than two inches of rain into parts of Fayette County so far on the day. And I'm watching some additional showers and storms trying to pop to our northwest. First things first, though, that is a brand new flash flood warning that has just been issued for parts of Russell County and Adair County. That'll go until 7:30 this evening. This does include parts of Lake Cumberland, Russell Springs, Jamestown, over toward the Bryan, Glens Fork area, and Columbia here into Adair County. The cause for concern here is back. Back to our west. Look at the thunderstorms lining up from Bowling Green and west and moving over the same chunk of real estate. Some of that may try to push into sections of Wayne County, into parts of Pulaski County. May see some additional storms developing toward the uh, Liberty area there into Casey County. Then we have another wave of some heavy rain producing showers and storms across north central Kentucky, northern Harrison County. That's a very heavy rain producing thunderstorm there. Thunder and lightning on top of Georgetown across the downtown Lexington area. Farther west that we go, skies are cleaning up a little bit. Farther east that we go in the metro, now we get in on some very heavy rains across sections of the Montgomery County area down toward Estill County. But again, we're going to keep an eye on this cluster of thunderstorms that is working in across the Lake Cumberland area that will likely produce some flooding rains. Here's the view, by the way, at the station on Winchester Road where the rains continue to come down. A lot of ponding on area roadways, putting everything in motion, guys. And you can see why we are concerned about the flood threat this evening. And through tonight, you get some of those storms that are moving over the same areas, one right after another. Those can put down a quick two or three inches of rain in an hour or two to cause some more flooding issues. We'll be all over it as the evening wears on. Chris, thank you. Police say a man kidnapped a teenage girl with the intent of using her in human trafficking. 46 year old Walker Wright Jr. faces several charges in the case out of Lexington. WKYT's Victor Puente is tracking the investigation in our top story at 4 30. At his arraignment earlier today, Walker Wright Jr. faced a judge on charges that include the kidnapping and rape of a 15 year old girl. Lexington police arrested Walker Wright Jr. yesterday at a home on King Tree Drive. His arrest citation lists that home as his address, but the people at that house this morning told me he hasn't lived there for some time. They didn't want to discuss the charges, just saying he showed up there yesterday and was arrested. The first of the charges listed on his arrest citation is kidnapping. That citation says Wright unlawfully restrained a 15 year old female. Other charges include promoting human trafficking and rape. They say he engaged in sexual intercourse with that teen. A charge also says that she has an intellectual disability. The last two charges are unlawful transaction with a minor first and second degree. Police say Wright smoked crack cocaine and marijuana with the teen. Lexington police have told us they can't comment on the charges because the case is so convoluted. They're still sorting out what happened. They also normally don't discuss cases involving sexual assault. According to court records, Wright has had some drug related convictions in the past. But looking through those records, as far as we could tell, this is the first time he's ever been charged with anything this serious. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. Wet roads are blamed for a crash involving a deputy and a prisoner. We're told the Harlan County deputy lost control of the car in Letcher County while transporting the prisoner. Mitchell Grog shows us how it happened. Marks remained on the guardrail, and pieces of glass and a hubcap remained on the side of the road this morning. Fletcher County Sheriff's deputies say Harlan County Sheriff's deputy Kim Shore was transporting a prisoner, Janice Collins. Deputies say the cruiser lost traction and drove into an embankment. We are told it then turned to its side, hitting a guardrail before returning to its wheels. One neighbor says he has seen several crashes here, and police say the rain might have played a role. Especially right here, where there's so many 18 wheelers that comes through, 
uh, all that oil seeks up when the roads get wet, and it's it's easy to, it's easy to break traction. Both the deputy and the prisoner went to the Appalachian Regional Healthcare Hospital in Whitesburg. As Mitchell Grog reporting, deputies say Collins may have suffered at least one broken bone. WKYT's investigative team has found that some Kentucky animal shelters may not be meeting standards required by law. State law requires shelters to meet minimum standards. But when the law was put in place back in 2004, lawmakers took control and oversight out of the hands of the Department of Agriculture and gave control to each county, creating self-regulation for each county shelter. The only enforcement right now is that if you live in that county and you decide to follow this up, you can potentially sue your county for not meeting the requirements. That's it. That's your only recourse. Amber and Miranda Combs are in the newsroom now with a preview of the investigation coming up on WKYT News at 6. Amber? Sam, thank you. So, Miranda, this is one of those investigations that started out as one thing and really ended up as another, right? right. You were in the meetings months ago mm -hmm. and we started talking about this, and we initially wanted to find out how many dogs are euthanized in Kentucky animal shelters. And we started digging around and we were having a hard time coming up with that information. And then, turns out, other people that are involved in that, that world, so to speak, had a hard time coming up with that information as well. So, your search then uncovered what seems like a really big issue. Right, Amber. So, in 2004, Kentucky Kentucky set up minimum standards for Kentucky shelters, and that means stuff like heat in the winter, holding areas with protection from the weather, sanitary conditions, things like that. At the same time, they also took the oversight or control away from the Department of Agriculture, a state entity, and put it in the hands of the county. So they were kind of self regulating at this point. And what we found out is no one knows if they're actually following these minimum standards. And you went to several different shelters. You actually found one that was questionable? Right. If you read the standards, they're pretty easy to understand. And, and we went to one in Eastern Kentucky, and you'll see it tonight at 6, and you can make a decision mm -hmm. for yourself. All right, we'll be looking forward to that story, Miranda, coming up mm -hmm. tonight at 6. Sam? Lextran will operate on a different schedule this weekend because of the July 4th holiday. All Lextran bus routes will operate on an extended Sunday schedule on Saturday. The extended schedule includes three extra trips leaving the downtown transit center. The center parkway connector and the blue and green line trolleys will not be operating. Also expect detours downtown due to the Bluegrass 10,000 and the 4th of July parade. A Kentucky flag maker says the stars and stripes seem to be more popular ahead of this year's Independence Day. The company says more people are buying the American flag just as the production of the Confederate flag has been put on hold. As Connie Leonard reports, the company CEO says there could be a connection between the two. This time of year, the Oats Flag Company can easily make this statement. Yeah, we've been busy, yes. <laughs> as fun as it is helping Louisville and the rest of the country celebrate the 4th of July, making a flag is a serious and sometimes taxing job, beginning with 13 stripes sewn individually and then the stars. Uh, each one of the stars has 4,200 stitches in it. Uh, there's 50 stars. There's over 210,000 stitches. Last year through July, the company sold well over 30,000 flags and retired that many for clients. That's on top of every kind of flag production you can imagine, from high school glory to the SEC conference, even Wave 3 news banners. The company has long sold historic flags from their distributors for museums and for Civil War reenactments, including several versions of the Confederate flag. Until now, they have stopped manufacturing the Confederate flag uh, until further notice. President Randy Oates says he believes uh, those historical uh, groups will still be able to find flags for their events, but it's going to cost them. They're going to be custom flags. They're very, very, very expensive. And to be quite frank, they only buy one of those maybe every 10 years. Mm -hmm. Oates says they didn't have much of a market for Confederate flags in the first place, but he says it's possible the controversy may have spiked people's interest in American flags as their sales are a bit higher than usual. Whatever the reason, they'll keep on stitching as they've done proudly since 1945. We're dealing with the American flag. We're dealing with America and we're Americans. Yeah. And uh, we enjoy making the flag.